To Holy Pangolin, Warden here, TTV Sweaty, oh my god, Uter, they've been 10 months. Don't call me GH, but. Hey, hey, truck, I recently moved from EST to PST, shit sucks. Oh, dude, I bet it does suck. Now you have to have actually warm weather. Oh, gross. Now you don't have to eat like fucking Wawa for every meal. Oh, damn, your life is worse. Oh, man. <laughs> EU stream. EU stream. EU stream. What's up? Blessings upon you, European. You're healed. Be healed. I'm so glad. That I can save some European souls today. I got a, I got a, I got a DM, a DM from a uh, a UK fan, <laughs> and he said it was a, like a, a two paragraphs long, and it was real sincere. And he's like, "Hey man, um, I live in the UK. I'm like 22 years old. I've been really trying to get a job. I'm having a tough time doing it." Uh, everything feels kind of depressing here in the UK. The economy's not doing very well. And I love watching your streams. And when I tune in, everybody makes fun of the UK. It's actually making me really sad. <laughs> so I sent him a picture of Austin Powers and I said, that's not very groovy, baby. Um, I was cackling, bro. I'm having a great time. And But then I thought about it more and I realized he's got a point. So today is official... European Appreciation Day. Okay? Everyone in chat must appreciate Europeans. Mm. Mm. <laughs> For what? Well, we got to figure that out. We got to figure that out. This is a European. We had to do this during Black History Month. <laughs> I chopped off a bit of Black History Month and I turned it into European Appreciation Day. It's <laughs> bad luck. Um, uh, yo, Atrock, how are you doing that thing where you post with the messages? It's very cool. Um, I coded it myself. Sort of a coding genius. Uh, what I do is I... I go into my mind palace and I see it all as green matrix type code and then I... I pull out the the digits and the data and reanalyze it. Hey, Big A, will you please, please thank my sub, Muff... Let me get your name right. Let me get your name right. Muffalin Pierce 69 What a stupid fucking name. <laughs> thanks, for the, thanks for the six months, though. Appreciate that. Um, you would have to be European, would you? You would have to be European, because if you are, I apologize. I I didn't appreciate you enough. Dr. Milkshake, thank you for the four months. Um, guys, what's your favorite part about Europe on three? I'll start, okay? Well, no, we all do it at the same time. One, two, three. The stench. <laughs> the stench. <laughs> Uh, they're far away. The teeth. You guys, I mean, you guys know that the, even the teeth meme really only applies to the UK. Like, no, there's no meme about like, I don't know, Germans having bad teeth. They have good teeth. Uh, 
Mm. Walkable cities. True. Facts. Damn, I do actually appreciate a good walkable city. Not as much as I appreciate getting in a nice Ford F-150 during truck month and plowing over a small sedan to get to a uh, 18-acre parking lot from my nearest Walmart. I appreciate that a little bit more, but I do like a walkable city. Uh... Why would you betray us West Coast giga chads like this? Why give the Euro pores more than they deserve? Um, I think I stream every single day to PST only times. <laughs> so it seems a little greedy. Otto, why don't you move the chat overlay to the bottom left? Otto, why don't you let me handle my business on this one, right? Seems a little nosy, a little pushy. Like I hand coded this in assembly. I created this overlay and then here's you telling me how I should use it. Just feels a little, a little gauche, a little tacky. Uh, uh, how do I move this, actually, if I wanted to? Yoink. What if I made it even bigger? Uh, yoink. My commute is four minutes by train plus ten minutes walking. Yuck! Gross. If your commute isn't at least 40 minutes, what, your, your life isn't even worth living, dude. It's too short. <laughs> you know? You're walking? Um, yeah, like, for example, what I... I think a good commute should have... Let me give you an example of an ideal commute. Wake up, all right, immediately get ready to go to work. Get in your car, ideally ideally a Hummer, but if you have to do a Ford F-150, that's fine. Immediate traffic from the moment you get out of your main street. Then you pull into a Starbucks or a McDonald's and wait in, let's say, a 15 to 25-minute line at the drive-thru so you can get your morning delicious breakfast, okay? Once you get that breakfast, then you head onto the highway, 30, 45 minute traffic to get to work. That's when you work most of your day. Do the same thing on the way home, except you stop at like a, you know, a different fast food place for your dinner. Um, make sure to be idling while in line. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um... That's how God intended. That I mean, I'm, not, I'm like I'm not saying it's like the only way to do things. I'm just saying like if you read the Bible, which I haven't, you know, I've skimmed, but like I'm pretty sure it says that's the way to do it. I'm pretty sure Christ in chapter two talks about how you need to be in a uh, traffic heavy commute. Yo, hey truck, I could learn use what I learned from your stream at work. That's your first chat message. What did you learn from my stream that you used at work? Did you say, if you work, you twerk, and you jerk, that's a full day? That's a hell of a day? <laughs> Do that seven days a week, you're going to have something special? Is that what you used? Or like, what what part of it did you use? What the hell are you doing online, What What are you guys saying this like I came to the wrong part of town? <laughs> I can stream whatever time I want. That's the point. I just choose to stream at seven. You can't fucking box me into the in a different fucking hour slot. If I want to stream at fucking two, then I will. You're saying it so ominously. Uh, did you quit Hitman? I only stream Hitman when you're not watching. Netros, I literally check. I know this sounds a little silly, but I check the fucking thing. And then when you're live in my chat, I don't play it. So we actually do hundreds of hours of Hitman, but always to avoid your exact time slot. Um. Oh! That was a very good Starburst. My God. Mm. Fuck. Bro, fucking up my schedule completely inconsiderate. Guys, you guys cannot complain about my hours being late all the time. And then I do an early stream and you're complaining about that. Maybe you just like to complain. Do you ever think that maybe Twitch chat collectively enjoys complaining more than even the things they're complaining about? 
Um, CT Poggies. What, dude, can, <laughs> CT, what, what's going on in CT? Let's be honest. <laughs> can we keep it a fucking stack, dude? What do you what do you got going on in CT that you need to w worry about time like when I'm streaming? What is CT Central Time, bro? Um, they got work, farming, trucks. Um, I thought you were talking about Connecticut. No, it's, it's like, Connecticut doesn't have its own time zone. Um. Hey, Shrock, I love the Hollow Knight boss tier list video. Can you make another? You make another video where I do the exact same tier list? It would be the same. It would be the same tiers. <laughs> I haven't. The, my opinion hasn't changed. I haven't played the game since. It would be the same video with the same tier list. Why would I do that? Why not just. Um. Are you aware you look like Christian Erickson? Are you aware Christian Erickson looks like me? Okay. I'm sorry to wherever you're from, but nobody cares about this football soccer shit. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, th we care about people that play video games on stream. Uh... And Christian Erickson is absolutely, who's heard of this guy? You know what I'm saying? Hey, Truck, can you do a, a, a stream where you rate different types of soy sauces? No. <laughs> Smiley face. No, I can't do that. I keep clicking the wrong thing. The one thing I'll say is I keep clicking the wrong fucking button. Um. Yo, Atrioc, which country am I from? I don't know. <laughs> Lulu, Lu. Doesn't show me the fucking flag. I don't know. <laughs> Bro, I have no fucking idea. Uh, what is... Hey, Atrioc, I know this is Ruby, but I need to leave the stream study at 1.40 a.m. I know this forget. Yeah, you're good. Go study. Um, can you get Ari to 3D print you a watch so you're never late for stream again? The reason that I am, fuck you. This is not even, <laughs> I'm not engaging with that in good faith. Fuck you. That's my response. Two of these. Uh-oh, it's two o'clock. Lule, uh, forgive me, father, for I have skimmed. This is a beautiful panda production. What is this? Crown of Horns Occult Anthem. What is this? Why is everyone spamming this? I swear to God, you guys have too many fucking projects. <laughs> you guys will make some fucking plan on Discord, and then you'll come in, and then I'll be like dealing with some shit. All right? What is, what am I looking at here? Uh, Production. This song is for the person that was there for me when I had no hope, when I had no future. This song is for my number one, mm -hmm. my shepherd. Uh huh. So put your freaking lighters up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Why, why is this fucking 10 minutes long? Oh my God, why is this 10 minutes long? Why do I check this shit and you make it 10 minutes? I'm serious. Stop making this shit over three to four minutes long ever. I'm telling you this for real. I'm telling you this for real. Stop doing it. Every time I check now, you make this shit longer. <laughs> I was gonna pause because I wanted to say, is this a religious anthem? Did you Proverbs guys? <laughs> 3, 5 through 6. It reads, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. 
In all thy ways acknowledge him. What, what is this? And he shall direct thy path. If someone comes into this stream right now and they're not part of the insane, deranged, nine level deep cult that we've created, it's just me looking at a photo of me playing religious music about me. <laughs> That's fucking strange. And it's 10 minutes long. <laughs> I'm not gonna pause again. I'm not gonna pause again. This just sounds like a normal religious song. I'm able to pause. This is not even a parody thus far. We're two minutes in, and it's just a song, a religious song. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a normal song that you can play about Christ. You don't get it? Maybe I don't. Maybe I openly don't. I feel like, unironically, this is like somebody who wants to get into making gospel music and wants to use my stream as the kickoff point for their fucking SoundCloud. <laughs> it's not a fun, this is not even a, we've literally lost the plot on these parody songs. This is a two minute, 30 second intro that has nothing to do with the stream. Uh, good plan, you have a huge evangelical overlap. Do I? What percent of my audience do you think is uh, born again Christian? Can I just ask? Of, of, the, of my chat, how many of you are deeply, deeply part of, let's say, the hardcore religious right. A huge part of your decisions and your life are based on what you think Christ would want. You donate a large portion of your income to the church. You go to Omega Church weekly, if not. Huge tithes. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Give me farmer, for I have skimmed. <laughs> I was gonna what pales you, my God. <laughs> this is my priest. This is my priest. I'm going to hell for sure. <laughs> if my priest looks like a fucking anime protagonist, I'm not. I'm definitely not getting my sins absolved. Oh God. What pales you, my God? I. I used to go over to my friend Daniel's house after school to play video games. I didn't do this. One, one day before summer break, I borrowed a game from him. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. He, he, he had just gotten it, and I, I was just so jealous. He, it's not a good game. I asked him to borrow it, and he was still playing something else, so he let me. I didn't tell him that I was moving away. <laughs> I never saw him again. You it's actually pardoned my cow. Super fucked up. I wouldn't but pardon that. Perchance, is there still something tugging at your mind, farmer? You, you, you can't just say perchance. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry. This is hard. I, I'm the reason <laughs> my dog died. What the fuck? I, where is this going? I didn't bring my homework to school one day. So, I I, I, I I told my teacher that my dog ate it. She she called my parents and and they were so 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 upset. 
But my dog didn't eat my homework. So they killed the dog? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, Brandon, the farmer of pastures, through the decaf and recaffeination of his that? calf, has reconciled the world to himself oh and sent God. the holy cow among us. What the fuck is happening? Bro, what is literally happening? What is going on? I don't... Th th this is crazy. This is lunacy. This is a complete fever dream. I have I have no idea. I <laughs> For the forgiveness of skins, to the moon is free of the ranch, may Brandon give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from the skins in the name of the farmer. Bro, I stream early one time, and this is what I get. <laughs> you fucking daywalkers are so strange. Oh, I, I was hanging out with the fucking degens at night, people avoiding homework and shit. The fucking daywalkers are lunacy, lunacy. End of the calf, end of the holy cow. Amen. One last thing, farmer. How how many hail dairies? Hail dairies. <laughs> yeah. The others boo, so I moo at the pasture. Reverse the hearse, I slaughter the master. Bull to bear, I sound the horns of the rapture. Say your prayers before you die. Lies unfiltered, ground you to shame. I was Fox. Stay prepared for your blackest night. So I just want to understand. So this is like about a rebellious cow who's like, "fuck the farmer." Um, is that? Am I getting at the gist of it? Like the the cow has been living in some farm based society, and but now, <laughs> and all of that comes back to the fact that cow starts with a C, and coffee starts with a C, and somebody on the Reddit two years ago said. I'm a coffee cow, and now we are currently listening to a kind of a metal slash gospel album with animation about how I skimmed instead of sinned talking to a bat. <laughs> and you guys all think this is normal. This is cool. Like, this is all a real normal way for a community to behave and grow and evolve. Great. Not eating my vultures I pray for the slot to stop one day But for now keep it topped as I turn down your hay I will not stop the clock till I pop out the glock Turn your prime into awful I will be unlocked Say your prayers before you die Lies unfiltered ground you to All I want, all I want in this world is for somebody to be listening to this song unironically, like in their headphones or something on their phone in public, and then accidentally the the aux gets pulled out and it starts playing publicly, this song, and then someone asks you, oh, what is that? And then you have to explain step by step what it is and how you got there. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my dream. I wish I could, I would pay such good money. I'd pay $10,000 to watch that. To have you explain, st well, you, you have to understand, it's, this is called Crown of Horns. It's, <laughs> who's that guy? His name's Atrac. He's a, he's kind of a business and marketing streamer. That is a, and the story's about a cow and, the, <laughs> yeah, well, they call him the coffee cow. It's, I feel like that, stay, I would love to hear that. Stay prepared for your blackest night.
Is this, uh, original? Because it kind of goes dumb, I mean, the like backing track. Kind of goes dumb hard. Kind of want to use it in my... Oh, remind me, I got a story about music. Yeah, I feel the drip drop from the heavens. Coffee drip dropping like blessings. I live through all of the others and I just kneel down for the message I pray. The grass always stay green, the past is always gonna feed it, so I keep laying my schemes. I'm rhyming hope and poetry, reach for pen for my skims. Father, forgive me, I was young, coke, and I ain't know what I did. I was young, broke, the bloom game ain't all that I hope. The crown of horns like Emperor Close ain't all that it seems. This is like the coffee cow, I'm never gonna fail. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is like literally religious era Kanye. This is like Jesus is King era Kanye, but about a religion, about a fucking coffee cow <laughs> I made it hit a pop I'm never going to hell Stars or dreams turn to Starbucks as well Commercial farms put all of our passions on sale So who the real is? I'm not talking about races The black and white spotted the graces Like uh, and then embraces The light shining from fake of the legends of bovines and ladies Keep shining like days Like oh, uh, the green on the paper Like oh, uh. This is the Jesus era. What's the next era? Lil Nas X. <laughs> Satan's dick. Can you guys believe this is the intro track to the Outer Wilds DLC? <laughs> Can you believe this is how they chose to start it? That's mind boggling to me. What's up, Blur? I feel like you could easily get away with listening to this. I think you could play this to other people and be like, yeah, I listen to indie music. Like, I found some really good. <laughs> as long as you didn't explain. I'm going to play this at my church. <laughs> we play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're dying <laughs> in the ER. <laughs> We're losing our democracy. <laughs> okay. Well, that was the most normal intro we've ever had to a stream. Welcome, Europeans. That's what every stream is like. If this is your first one because of my different time slot, this is what normally we do. We open with a 20-minute parody religious album about cows and coffee featuring a script in the middle, a uh, scripted scene. Um, today, we're going to be playing the Outer Wilds DLC that has been much demanded. Uh, blind, that's the plan. We're gonna play that. We're going in completely blind. Uh, jump in. Gonna play it all day. No backseating. No spoilies. Um, should be fun. Should be great. Wait, I need to turn on the air. It's fucking hot in here. Turn on the air. Oh, dude, I realized just now this one second. I left a freezer shirt in the freezer three days ago. That's got to be the fucking coldest fucking shirt. It's gonna be wet and. You shouldn't freeze it for that long.
Big A, be careful. Oh, I'm not putting it on yet. I'm saving it. I'm just turning on the air. Although I kind of do want it. This is too hard. This, this shirt goes too dumb hard for me to take it off. Look at this thing. I got this at, at uh, Genesis. It's like this cool flower GameCube. This thing fucking, this is rules. Um, I wish I remembered the name of the artist, but. Uh, um, I thought it was Pikmin. No class, dude. No taste. Um, hey, truck. I'm European, so it's kind of late for me. Start playing immediately. Now, please. Don't demand shit of me. This is a good time for Europeans. Okay? You just finished with your daily... Um... <laughs> what do you guys do daily? <laughs> I don't know. You just paid your 98% tax rate. You drank tea. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> now you're sitting down to give your money to some American tech platform that is sucking all the capital out of your economy while giving you no jobs. <laughs> That's the dopest thing you guys do is you just sit there and you sit there on Facebook or Instagram or Google or Amazon and then <laughs> siphon all the money over here to West Coast California liberals and... Um, you get nothing for it. Um, yo, fuck Europeans. Good time slot for most South America. Thanks, brother, from Latino to Latino. My fellow Latino king, dude. Good to see you. Um, compared to... Do -do, do -do -do -do. Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Two years of good times. Thanks for the content. Chompers, thank you for 24 months. Sheesh, 24. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Wait, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Let me let me let me get a little vibe check here. Let me let me uh talk to some check because I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into a big fucking massive gaming session here today. I'm live early. I got nothing to do till 11 p.m. I'm gonna be I want I wanna get the vibes, you know, catch catch a catch a vibe check. Um Two midterms today. All right. Hopefully you did well. I'm way behind on my web dev project. Just use fucking chat GPT. I left my Enron hat at a bus stop while drunk last night. Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn. You know what, though? Someone carried on the legacy. Where one Enron hat falls, a new fucking Enron fan is created. All right? Some dudes, some dudes picking it up. Um... Uh, Big come up for some homeless guy. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be dripped out of his mind. I found a free hat at a bus stop last night. Kind of. Oh, <laughs> so, well, there you go. Look at that. It all it all works out. It all fucking works out. Um, my morals are being challenged like never before. What does that mean? Uh, vibes are good. I'm sitting in supply chain class watching you instead of listening. <laughs> All right, I'll teach you all you need to know about supply chain, all right? Is that your number one goal with supply chain is to get your bread up so you can get a supply of chains, dude. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what this shit's about. My story about learning a raid in RuneScape with my clan, I got the job. That's fucking brazy. You told a story about a RuneScape raid in a job interview and it worked? I'll play this again. <laughs> you took the, I think you took the long odds, bro. I think that's crazy. Um, <laughs> it's to show coachability. Uh, it was a job for RuneScape raid director. Hmm. Skills are skills. Listen, I'm not saying it's not effective. There was people that used to like um, some Wall Street jobs used to value people that had played online poker um, or ran WoW guilds because they showed organizational skills, things like that. But it's like it's just, um, you know, some tech jobs. It's just uh, risky, you know. You just bring up RuneScape in an interview. It's like, it's gonna come off cringe. 
Um, yo, big ups for your Brazil fan base. There's dozens of us. Uh, I need something to say when I hear that from the future. What? What is a very common Brazilian phrase? Oh, don't worry, I got you. 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 Terminar and pizza. <laughs> to end with a pizza. Hell yeah, baby. You know what it means. Real Brazilians know. Real Brazilians know. Uh, goes back to soccer in the 1960s. That's so dope. That's so dope. Uh... H Rock, uh, <laughs> bro, you can't say that. I can. I'm Latino. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, um, guess what? I got an invite from Clint, the Glint Stevens, to play Rainbow Six with him. He messaged me today and said, "Yo." Do you want to play Rainbow Six with me if I start playing it? And I said, for you, Clint, I would jump on a grenade. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're probably going to do that. Should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah, obviously, Clint is going to do his yearly stream so he can afford the money to never stream for the rest of the year. Um, and then he didn't respond. He actually did respond. He said, LOL. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, I'm watching you in class on my laptop, but I'm also sports betting on my phone. Pay attention, class, okay? Perk up. This is how you do it. This guy's keeping his time optimized. Learning, grinding, improving, making money, betting parlays. Uh, he's the professor. <laughs> uh, hey, bro. Bro, Netros. Uh, this is your first day here. You will not be welcome back. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I look at your chat history. It's not good. You have, you have 20 messages today. They're all about this. I appreciate nothing from you <laughs> and goodbye goodbye bro uh uh no i wonder what he said it was just all it was all about hitman it was like hitman hitman play hitman um yo h-rock your content has kept me sane at this brain dead job i have typing in numbers of checks Normally a VOD frog, but I'm watching live at work right now. Your VODs and vids are truly phenomenal. And I've legit watched every second of every one since April 2023. <laughs> Holy shit, his brain has reached levels of rot we never thought was possible. Holy shit. The levels of rot, dude. That's You watched at least 100 hours of fucking me grinding Hitman Freelancer. Um, much love, Glizzy Boy, Coffee Cow, Spoon Track. I sports bet and broke even and stopped. Well, that's amazing. Good call. Uh, appreciate you stopping in. Thank you very much, Abstract Phoenix. Good luck at your fucking, uh, soul-sucking situation that you sound to be in. Um, can't you just cheat? You're typing in numbers of checks. Just make it up. Who's gonna check? <laughs> 50 checks. 100 checks. Just fucking run it. Um... Have you seen the first episode of Shogun? I have not. Uh, however, I may watch it with Lud and Shake because Ari doesn't want to watch it for whatever reason. Ari doesn't want to watch it, so I'm gonna try and get a little crew to watch it and maybe do a thing. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things. Nothing but good things, so I really want to watch it. Um, are you gonna watch Dune 2? Yes, Hundo P. And I'm going to give it the, you know, so I, if you guys don't know my Dune history, my Dune story, I watched Dune at Stan's house on his Michael Scott TV across the room, and I didn't like it. I thought Dune 1 was very, very mid, and I said so on broadcast, and then everyone got pissed 
because there's some people who have made Dune their fucking personality. And so they got mad. And for Dune 2, I've heard not only is it a better film, but I'm going to be seeing it in the IMAX experience. I'm going to see it in the full big cinema. So I'll give it its honest due. Mm. And really try uh, to see what it's meant to be. And then I'll, then I'll give my honest review of that. Um, doo -doo. Hey, Pezio, thank you for the uh, 12 months of a sub. Are you going to a big IMAX or a small IMAX? Because that'll make even more of a difference. You need to fucking check yourself. <laughs> Bro, you need to fucking draw the line somewhere, buddy. Because if you are going to give me a fucking um actually push up the glasses because I don't have a fucking max size IMAX. By the way, not that it matters, but I have we have the two biggest fucking IMAXs, I think, in the country here in L.A. It's L.A., dude. Uh, so you're listening to him? I'm not listening to him, but I'm just saying, like, it shouldn't matter. Uh, do you want your ears to bleed? I remember thinking they would during uh, Oppenheimer. I saw Oppenheimer in this theater, the fucking mega IMAX. And I remember thinking the bomb was going to be so loud it was going to hurt my ears, but it was fine. Um, you should watch Borderlands movie in IMAX. It's going to be better than Dune 2 because Kevin Hart is in it. <laughs> you didn't even spell his name right, bro. <laughs> You're such a big Kevin Hart fan, you can't even spell his last name. Uh, it's a different Kevin. <laughs> it's, it's Kevin Hart, the fucking key grip. <laughs> he handled catering on the film. It actually really improved the, the staff experience. Um... Uh, <clears throat> Um, not to flex, but one time. Oh wait, oh, sorry. Wait, uh, I like Dune too. Dune to others as I would have them Dune unto me. <laughs> I like that too. I also did see that tweet though. Um, not to be a dick or anything, but you still haven't accepted my request to connect on LinkedIn. T Swizzle, this is your first chat message. <laughs> not only are you not a sub. You are not even a chatter. This is your first chat message. You are asking me, you are you are mad at me that I didn't connect with you on LinkedIn. What do I use LinkedIn for? I'm a content creator, bro. <sighs> um, bro is a business student who just found out LinkedIn. Networking. <laughs> consulting? I did do consulting. I did consulting uh, like fucking February 23. It was, I told you about this. They, they reached out to me through LinkedIn after I quit NVIDIA. And they were like, hey, there's some people that want to talk about your experience at NVIDIA. And they paid $200 an hour. And it was... Literally them, it wasn't asking about marketing questions. It was like specifically about what NVIDIA does exactly. <laughs> it was literally other companies that wanted to ask exactly how many, like how many employees does NVIDIA have on email marketing? How many they have on social? Um, what is the fucking process of getting something approved? What is... It, it was the it was like literally just like specifics on how Nvidia does it so they can try to copy it. Um, did you do it? It none of it was anything important. <laughs> it wasn't like are they releasing the fifty ninety? It wasn't like it was like how many employees, bro? It was like what is what is the. 
It was like basics. To me, it was like basics. But uh, yeah, I, I fucking I got that bag. Um, how do you spell Kevin Hart's name? H A R T. Uh. Hey, Big A, did you know there's a Twitch channel that plays Slate Aspire with AI and chat? Why would I want to watch that? Um. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, wait. Uh, did Nvidia have an ad agency? No. We were actually very much against ad agencies. Maybe for a couple things we did it. Um, if you needed a bunch of like grunt work done, but we were very in-house marketing. Um, do streamers get money if a viewer is using Turbo? Yes, actually, we do. Um, did I decided to take your investing advice word for word. I put all of my savings into Berkshire Hathaway and I let it sit. I have no problem with what you're doing. This is not my investing advice word for word. <laughs> I haven't mentioned investing in Berkshire Hathaway one time in four years, not at all. So I just don't know, I don't know where you pulled this information. You're a nine month sub. Um, you did say that one time? No, I didn't. I've never said it, not once. Uh. He meant you've said all of these individual words before. <laughs> I've said Berkshire Hathaway. I've said investing. Okay, so you just took all the words, you cut them, pay, made your own. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, so, mm, 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 mm. Big A, I took your real estate advice literally and moved into my car full time. Got to get my money up and not my funny up. Uh, I think my advice is get up both, all right? You need to be constantly trying to be more hilarious. And that will make you more money. <clears throat> um, so what you should do is move into your car, then drive around and do impromptu stand-up sets. Uh, to people that are, like, just trying to live their life. <laughs> you should be comedy maxing. Yeah. Uh... People love that. Yeah, like if you see like a family in the park having a picnic, just jump out of your uh, car that you've been living in, <laughs> stand up there and go, hey, nice crowd, <laughs> and then start telling a tight five. Um, hey, Big A, could you instead choose to now stream Outer Wilds DLC at all today? So my no, I don't know what you're asking, but no. Um, Matt's IRL, thank you for two months. Make your stand-up really edgy. <laughs> Who's brave enough to take his career advice and go into video game journalism? I do always recommend that. I do say, this is my number one piece of advice to young people, is like, there's a lot of careers you can get into, but most of them are unstable. The one rock-solid way to make guaranteed high seven-figure income is to be a video game journalist. Write reviews, for like IGN or Kotaku. Um, it's just, it's rock solid, safe. It's not, yeah, it's not going anywhere. And then any excess money you make, put that into DraftKings. Um, it's future proof. Um, how's the real estate market right now? I'm trying to avoid studying for my real estate exam. Uh, man, I, I'm worried for you already. <laughs> it's, uh, the market is frozen, which is really bad for people who are real estate agents. It's terrible. There's so many of them leaving the career and getting fired and losing their jobs. Uh, it's like one of the worst times ever to be a real estate agent because there's there's a huge oversupply of them. Nobody is selling their houses because they're locked into low rates and they can't... Um, I am seeing there's real signs of price declines in some of the overbought areas. Like if you live in like a Texas suburb, house prices are dropping. Uh, I'm not saying it's it's nationwide, but in like some of the bubbly Florida areas, some of the places in um, Texas, some of the places in, we're seeing real house price declines. Um,
What are the worst times to be a real estate agent? Perhaps not the worst time to become one. What what is the difference? Once you become one, you are you are one. <laughs> It is, it's a really bad time to be a real estate agent. Uh, I would just tell you. I mean, I'm sure there's some markets where it's not. Obviously, some markets are doing well, but I'm just telling you it's not. It wouldn't be that. Well, I would say it's a tough time. Uh, I, I have a friend. Um, not a friend, I guess. He's a chatter, but I like talking to him and has reached out to me. He works at, a, I shouldn't say his employment place, but he works at one of the largest real estate firms um, in America. Uh, and tells me all the time about how fucking crazy it is behind the scenes. It's fucking shit. They're laying off people. These people are looking for different jobs. Um, uh, hey, big guy, I took your advice, and now I live at my... I left my real estate job, and now I live in my car trying to be funny and shout at passersby. <laughs> Great. You're crushing it. What's, tell me what are your classic jokes. What is something that you that you yell at passerby that makes them laugh? Mm. Glizzy, glizzy, glizzy. <laughs> That's a good one. They, and they get it. They get that it's an Atrox stream reference. Uh, they all get that. Random people that you're driving by. That's cool. And then they laugh and I love that. Um, would it be smart to invest in video now or is it too late? Uh, one thing I'll tell you is that um, this is something you can know. So when I tell you an answer to this, it's because I know it for a fact. People are capable of looking at things and knowing for a fact what prices will be tomorrow, next week. One thing you don't know about investing is that you can always figure it out. <laughs> There's somebody out there that has perfect advice on the price action of all stocks in the future. And if you don't know that, then you're, you're, you're investing blind, dude. So the secret to investing is to go around asking different people what the price action is going to be until you find somebody that tells you what you already want to hear and then do that. That's, um, no, nobody fucking knows, bro. Unless you're an insider trader, nobody knows. Uh... I do want to watch that Veritasium video, but I probably won't do it today. Um, I have a sibling who's a copywriter. I'm worried for them because of generative AI. What are your thoughts on the long-term prospects of those fields? I do think copywriting is one field that's been hit fucking like a truck by ChatGPT. But if they're good at it, honestly, one of the growth areas in writing that I've seen is ghostwriting, <laughs> where... Um, this is an example, but like there's rich people that want to pay a writer to write stuff for them so they can seem more relatable and <laughs> or like publish copywriter is someone that writes, just writes copy. Copy is just text. Um, um, uh, anyway, I, I guess I'd be I'd be somewhat worried for them, but only if they're doing like. Here's a here's a broader take. I'll give you a broader take. I'll give you a scarier but broader take. Uh, and I mentioned this before. It's, this is the Gucci dollar, dollar Tree economy. <laughs> okay? If you are thinking of a business idea or trying to make your skills more marketable, think of it as Gucci or Dollar Tree. As in, either it needs to be extremely broad, extremely mass market, low cost, million X, which is kind of what ChatGPT is doing, or it needs to cater to the rich. <laughs> okay? That's what you have to do. In this economy, there's no middle class to cater to. So if you are the Gucci of copywriting, as in you can do like a high-end service where you, I don't know, you, you can ghostwrite fucking sub stacks for rich people or you can, uh, something like, you know, whatever. If you can do really high-end, if you can present yourself as luxury, then you can do it. Otherwise, yeah, you'd be fucked. Um... Do you think becoming a monk is a good career job? <laughs> a good career job? It's is monk even a job? 
I think it I think it could be good spiritually. Could be good for your life. If you are if you are like a Sigma Grindset Grussler looking for the best career maximization and you're doing monk for that reason, you're fucking crazy. Uh too much schooling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, monk sounds fun, bro. I don't know if it sounds like it's it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna be a great wealth accumulator. That's what I'll tell you. Although they do, they do, they're tax free, right? Is there any way you could set up like a monk, like a monastery with other quote unquote monks, but all you guys do is day trade? <laughs> you're at, you're you're the monastery of fucking Warren Buffett or something, and then you. You, is there something with that? Um, Multi-level monking. Big A, I took your advice. You guys keep saying you took my advice and it's always something that I never said to do. I took your advice and quit my job to follow my dream of becoming a full-time League of Legends streamer. I averaged two viewers, one is my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As I mentioned, when I gave this very real advice, it's like you have to be persistent with it. Okay. One thing you have to understand about Twitch is that everyone who streams will succeed. It will work out for you. Um, you just have to do it for a lot of time, infinite amount of time. So um, just keep doing it. The only thing I would say is as you're grinding hundreds of hours of league streaming, the worst thing you could do is change. Never change the content you're creating. What I recommend is go live, maybe don't even have a cam, get a real scratchy microphone, play gold level League of Legends, kind of talk a little bit, but don't talk very much, and then do that consistently over and over and over. The only thing you need to change is more hours, <laughs> okay? I wouldn't even, and if you do that for long enough, not only will it be rich, you'll be fucking mega rich, but then, you, you encounter another problem because once you become a big streamer and you have 40,000 views, um, you'll find out you're in the hardest job. You'll find out that it's the hardest. You've, you've signed yourself up for the most difficult career there is. Um, yo, big A student here. I've been chugging two cans of monster in the morning and drinking initial two cans throughout the day, but I'm concerned this might be bad for my health. Should I be, or should I double down and drink an additional four cans? see the thing is you don't want that much liquid liquid's bad for you okay you want to minimize the liquid maximize the effect toss out the monster get four locos okay that'll, that'll get you more four locos will get you more energy and more uh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight up caffeine powder <laughs> dude do you see those little caffeine pills they probably still exist my brother used to have those because he was so fucking caffeine addicted. Those little caffeine pills. He would say. He would say. Uh, I got a pop of caffeine. <laughs> That's what my brother would say. He's like. I got I got a pop of caffeine real quick. And then he would, he would have one of those. 100%. He's straight up addicted to caffeine. But he's trying to quit soda. Um, so do that. Do one of those. I took your advice and started a home business so I could steal my own company secrets and use that to insider trade. Just sounds like you're LARPing. <laughs> what are you stealing? What are you, you don't, you don't even, you're not even publicly listed. You're a home business. <laughs> you're trading with yourself. And always coming out on top. Holy sh**. Uh, hey, Shrek Marine here. I have a coworker that drank six monsters every single day, and now he's out with full med September pay from a heart condition. Uh, as a fellow Marine, a streamer, uh, I got to be honest with you. That's a great. That's a great plan. Holy shit, worked out great. Um, at ease, soldier. By the way. I outrank you. <laughs> it's weird you didn't salute, Jager. I'm oh, sorry. It is weird you didn't salute when you're when you're speaking to a superior officer. Uh, 
I do think it's a little odd, but I appreciate your message. <laughs> Uh, HROC, should I sell a kidney to pay off my student loans? No, what you should do is package your student loans into a collateralized debt obligation and sell those to buy more kidneys. Flip it. Flip it. Profit. Um... Make your kidney into beans and sell to the UK. <laughs> UK fucks in chat, any of you exist? Is it true that you will eat any form of beans? I'm just, I want to confirm or deny some things I've heard about Europe, okay? Is it true that no matter what, if they put a bean on it, you'll eat it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, UK is not EU Actually fucking true Actually fucking true I don't even know why I'm living in the past Um, What happened to EU safe space? Today's supposed to be EU appreciation day I feel like we've gone off track I feel like we've gone off track Hey big guy Thanks for the Enron hats Um, I couldn't afford one at the time But I remember that you taught us about afterpay So now I have a cool new hat Don't even joke about that Zeno's <laughs> Afterpay triggers me. All of you fucking Zoomers are using Afterpay for every fucking thing. It's holy shit. I, I, I hope that some people in my chat have listened are not, are learning, are waking up. It's so fucking bad. It's so bad. The, the numbers keep ticking up. Afterpay and Klarna are so bad. Um, not me. I use Klarna. I use a firm to pay for my Wendy's. Well, that's smart. That's smart because you're getting in on the ground floor before the surge pricing. All right? You, you, what you would do is acquire as many burgers as possible, stock up, and then resell them during surge hours. Um, just use Klarna to pay off your afterpay bill. It's literally free money. <laughs> uh, oh yes you're all so smart you've all figured out ways around this business uh, psychologically when people use Afterpay and Klarna they spend more than they would have otherwise thereby increasing slowly but surely the risk that eventually they will miss one payment. Once you miss a payment, you are locked into greater than credit card level interest rates. Fucking obscene levels of interest rates. I feel like sometimes it's like 200 plus percent. They are banking on it. Uh, at which point you're getting fucking milked. You're getting hosed. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a terrible habit to pick up using uh, Klarna and Afterpay. The entire business model is predatory. It is banking on getting you to slip up once so they can fucking... Um, how is there no regulation around after bullshit like there is for... For credit. Isn't this basically on the path of revision? I wouldn't put it on the path to a Great Depression. Uh, that's an entirely different situation. But I would say, like, default rates are rising on credit cards, on auto loans, and on fucking after paying Klarna. People, are, people have spent more than they can pay, especially at the lower end of the economy. If you're not in the top fucking 10% super rich, don't care about money, everything's easy for you, and you are trying to get by week to week by putting your groceries or bills on Klarna or Afterpay, you are you are setting yourself up for even more pain. Uh, and it's happening. People are doing it right now. It pisses me off. I don't blame them. I mean, they're forced into a bad situation, but like, I fucking hate these companies. I hate Klarna Afterpay. I think they're so predatory. Um, 
ドゥルドゥルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルうん。Hey, Did you know that Amazon has created a new rule limiting the number of books authors can self publish to three a day? <laughs> Because of AI generated material?、Uh, if they're put three a day is ridiculous. What real author is publishing three books a day? Other than me, because I stay g r u s s e l i n g George R.R. R. Martin. <laughs> George R.R. Martin out here dropping three fucking Game of Thrones a day, dude. He stays g r u s s e l i n g He fucking grinds it out.、Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Um, what if I c l a r n a my book releases? What was it? Why are businesses that essentially rely on holding their customers hostage prescriptions not clamped down on more? I think there's people trying.、Um, there w a s some laws passed about like gyms.、Uh, you know, the, the biggest example is gym memberships where they like lock you into a gym membership. You cannot cancel online. You have to call, but only during certain hours.、Uh, it's a huge scam. It's fucked up. They, they rely on the fact that you get motivated for a week or a month and then lose motivation, and then they get to just farm your money for free without providing you no service. It's,、uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's fucked up. It should be illegal, 100%. One thing I'll say while I'm here. Is that a service that does this for you? Is Rocket Money! Rocketmoney.com slash HROC. If you ever want to check out Rocket Money, they can cancel your gym for you. They can cancel your cable bill or lower the cost of it for you. They're actually the best fucking. Subscription tracking and canceling service out there. 100%. I love them. I used to use them when they were called Truebill. They're also my favorite sponsor. So if you ever have some fucking five minute downtime and want to help me out because they pay for an entire employee of mine, then you go to rocketmoney.com slash HROC. You sign up for free with your email right here. And everybody pogs. Costs you nothing.、Um, and makes me plus one employee. Check it out. I, I would sincerely appreciate it. Um. Used to use them? No, I've used them since before they sponsored me, is what I'm saying. Don't try to put words in my mouth, you little fuck.、Uh, I've used them since they were called Truebill.、Uh, they can cancel my mortgage. <laughs> no, they can't do that. They cannot cancel your mortgage. If you took out a fucking $600,000 loan for a house, they can't just get that off your books. They, you do have to pay that. How do they make their money? That's a great fucking question. How do they make their money? I ask the same thing.、Uh, the main way is if you have something like, a, let's say you have a $200 cable bill and you want to lower it. Oh, it automatically goes down. And you want to lower it, you can use their service and they get a cut of what they save you. So let's say they fucking find a.、Um, I don't know. Like, for example, if you threaten to cancel every single month for your cable bill, you can often get a better deal, but it's a huge hassle. So, what they'll do is they'll get it down to $160 a month or whatever, and they get a cut of the $40 that they saved you.、Um, so, it's cool.、Um, they also have like a paid service where it's like you could pay for, I think it helps with savings tracking and all that stuff. It's good. Like, there's, there's, it's good stuff. I legitimately think, even if you just use it once, you'll usually find something to cancel that you want to cancel and save your own money. Um, uh, can they cancel Twitch subs? 
Yes. <laughs> can I be honest with you? Yes. They can. <laughs> uh, I know you're capping because you want to use it on me. Uh, but I, I have used it. I think I had to cancel. I think I had like 120 active Twitch subs uh, at one point. <laughs> Because I, I, had, I had so many, I had so many things that I was fucking spending money on. Because it all came out of my same PayPal. And, my, and you know, my, my content creation income would only go into PayPal. And all of my uh, IRL income from like NVIDIA would go to my bank. And I never spent more than I made from like my normal stuff. So I never cared about what was on the PayPal. And then all of my recurring fees would go to the PayPal. And I was spending like just an absurd amount on news articles and fucking Twitch. Um, so I, I definitely cut that down, way down. Um, mm -hmm. Did you take the maximum allotted stock options during time of video? <laughs> it's not, it's not, you don't pick. But I, yes, I, I got the largest percentage of my income in stock that I'd ever had. Then after I did the green out, I got a thing called the Jensen bonus from Jensen Wong himself that was entirely stock. And then I didn't sell a single share for four years. Um, so it worked out, it worked out. Uh, <laughs> Is Rocket Money U.S. only? I think it may be, but it might be North America only. Canadians may, might even be grandfathered in. Dude, I, I just feel like Canada should just join the U.S. already. <laughs> Can we just do that? Hell, even Mexico, bro. Let's just, let's call North America what it is. America. And just get it all, we'll get it all into one big country. Uh, everyone will be happy. It'll be fun. <clears throat> Can't have a border crisis if there's no border. Exactly. Plus, then the border, you know, from Mexico to South America, that's pretty small. That's pretty easy to manage. Um, and you know what? Toss Cuba in there, too. <laughs> Imagine if instead of Cuban cigars, they were good old-fashioned American cigars. Sounds pretty appealing, doesn't it? Hmm... <laughs> Or they're made in the U.S. of A. If the whole world is America, there's no borders to work. Do you think we have any generic investing advice? The generic investing advice that you should always listen to, that I always say first, is that you should dollar cost average, which means like don't put all your money in one month, put a little bit every month, into the S&P 500. That's what everyone will tell you. Um... I just want you to, I want you to know that and internalize that so that I can never be faulted. <laughs> uh, just get some broad based ETF and then put your money into that a little bit every month. Okay. Over a long timeline, the market grows. Uh, so, I'm not even going to say the butt, but there is a butt. <laughs> There's a very, very significant butt, but I just don't want to get into it every day. All right. Um, <clears throat> um, how does this strategy compare to YOLOing it all on Bitcoin? I do think I I'm understanding more that I. It's so much easier for me to talk about how risky and dangerous a lot of these dumb fucking investments are because I have some money. <laughs> so I am in the mode where I am protecting capital. But I understand that Zoomers don't want to fucking hear that. They don't want to hear it because they are understandably looking at a world where things are getting like the average middle class house kids life is getting more and more out of reach and they don't see a path there with normal investing practices. 
So they are constantly, almost nihilistically, looking for the YOLO, for the lottery ticket. They are looking for millennials as well. I'm sorry, this includes millennials, 100%. This is millennials and Zoomers. Basically anyone under 45 who didn't buy, didn't bink a house in the 80s, you know? Um, or the 90s. I think it's the last time. The 90s is the last time we had normal price-to-income ratios on a house. Uh, or I guess you actually had a real brief appointment in like 2009. <laughs> After the fucking bubble plap. You had the 90s and 2009. Otherwise, you were fucked. And um, if you didn't bink a house in those periods, then you're like, wow, what the fuck? I can't get the normal path. So you're looking for a fucking YOLO. I get it. I just want you to know that it's... I don't know. I feel like everyone plays into that. And so I feel like I have a responsibility for my tiny little audience to tell them, hey, bro, that's fucking dangerous. Historically, it ends in tragedy. Ends in heartbreak. Ends in divorce. Ends in... <laughs> it's just bad. It doesn't end well. So I have to tell you. And then people get mad at me, but I have to tell you. Um... Um, uh, you've been gymming. I actually did a really good workout yesterday. Uh, but blur, blur, and and uh, hugs and Rachel and we had a squad. We did a really good fucking arms workout. Who the? Uh, it was good. It was good. Um, I do think I read this somewhere. It's might have been algebra of happiness. Um, sweating. Like doing some physical activity, like working out where you sweat with other people, like friends, is, and again, I'm generalizing on both, is like one of the highest happiness ROI things you can do. And I find that to be true. You hang out with some friends and you climb or you fucking work out, you're, you just get your brain chemicals for the day. You feel great. Um, sweating with friends, flirt. You could have sex with them if you want to. <laughs> if you want to get all your fucking fellas and have a big orgy, then maybe you'll have happy chemicals as well. I'm just saying, I prefer to do exercise. Mm. Boxing with my homies, my favorite shit in the world. I did some boxing. So after we finished working out yesterday, uh, Hugs and I did a little bit of boxing, and it was fun. Shit's fun. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm so bad at it, but I'm only done two times, so what are you going to do? It's hard. You got to practice. Um... <clears throat> Thoughts on leveraged rental properties. My brother keeps pressuring me to do it, and I don't know how to convince him it's crazy risky. I, I would tell him that, I mean, listen, I saw this today. Did I save it? If I save this, I can save your life. If not, you're going to be stuck doing rentals with your brother. Did I like it? Oh, I don't think I liked the tweet. Sorry, bro. <laughs> There's a very interesting tweet about um, rents dropping in a lot of areas as supply comes online, and a lot of people that own rental properties seeing empty apartments for many, many months and freaking out. And now they're worried. And so they're trying to like make up for the lost income by raising rent on the last few tenants they still have, which of course is gonna lead them to leave. And it's a, it's a problem. I would say having leveraged rental properties is extremely fucking risky right now. That's basically the Airbnb bust, which is happening across many, many markets. Again, the thing about real estate that is so hard to understand for a lot of people is that it's not... You know, it's very rare cases like 2007, but outside of that, it's not a one size fits all every county in the nation. It's basically about demographics. Where are people moving to and where are they moving from and where are people get too excited and overbought and where are they? So I would just say, I would be fucking sweating right now if I was one of the people that took out a bunch of loans to buy Airbnb rental properties. That shit, that business is not doing well on, on average. Uh... And your boy, your bro, your bro, probably watches a lot of fucking TikTok investment advice because that's what they always preach. <laughs> it, it, like, it's like the new drop shipping. Everyone on fucking TikTok will tell you it's easy. Just take out a big fat loan, buy a property, set it up for a rental. It's really easy. It's no problem. The cash flow is great, but it's not true. It's not easy. It's hard to fill those properties, harder all the time. Uh, you're hustling to try and do it. You don't get the rents you think you're going to get. And the bank still wants its money every month. And if you have a couple down months where you don't fill up, all of a sudden that payment looks really fucking scary. Uh, right here. Look at this. I managed two rental properties and confirm it's getting hard to get good qualified candidates for our price. Exactly. Exactly, dude. It was fucking easy for a minute. 
and it's getting hard. I appreciate you admitting this. Uh, and imagine if you had 10, you know, instead of two. 10 or 12. And the stress will eat you alive. The amount of bills you're going to owe every month to the bank, and you have to constantly try to find tenants that'll pay your above market rents and not fucking trash the place. Uh, how can rental prices be on the climb, but housing prices are still so high? First of all, two different markets. Uh, rental is based on the supply of apartments and, and rents, and housing is on the supply of houses. There's a much less supply of houses, but also the housing market right now is frozen. I want to tell you the number of transactions, that means people buying and selling houses, is low. It's like the lowest it's been in our lifetimes. It's very low. There's so many boomers sitting on houses that won't sell. Um, that's why real estate agents are freaking out because they make money when a house is bought or sold. They're not making any money. Real estate agents are freaking out. So the house, houses are just frozen. The prices are frozen. They're not coming down necessarily, but they're not going up. They're just stuck because nobody's buying or selling. The amount of transactions is really low. Why are people selling them? Because interest rates are really high. I hate to pirate software it again, but I'll do this one thing and then we'll play the game. I just wanna, I want people to understand what's going on. Cause I think this is like, 2023 was not a normal year. It's like a, it's, it's a weird holding year where everyone's just waiting and seeing. Survive till 25, that's what they're all saying. You know, again, interest rate means the cost of borrowing, right? So if you borrow 100K, at a, you know, let's say a 2% interest rate, you have a pretty small payment. Again, I'm not doing the math here, but like you have a small payment every month. If you can afford the payment, you're good. Let's say, you, let's just say you have a fucking $1,500 payment, all right? Right? Now imagine the interest rates, which they are right now, have jumped up to like 7%, okay? Now your payment's way fucking higher. Let's say you have a fucking 4K payment. Again, I'm, <coughs> whose math's not right, but. <coughs> uh, this is harder to afford. You can't make this every month. So people that own these big fucking houses, they have these long-term uh, loans they took out at low rates. There's a lot of boomers that like bought when rates were 2%. So they bought, they took out a big loan. They bought a house. They have a 2% mortgage. Their payment is really low. If they sell their house, even for a high price, and they go buy a different house, their payment jumps way up. People hate having a high monthly payment. So much of understanding American economy is around people trying to get their monthly payment low. They don't care how much they pay total. <laughs> this is what you have to understand. This is like a deep unlocking point for me. So much of America is about people who don't give a shit if they do a million dollar loan as long as they have a low monthly payment. That's, that's what it is, okay? People are very worried about selling their 2% house to get a fucking 7% loan and then... Um, <clears throat> you also pay a lot more total interest rates. High. Yeah, well, yes, you do, but only if the price stays the same. Normally, prices would go down. As interest rates go up, prices would go down, but instead they just froze. They just went flat. No one sold. <laughs> um, hmm. I wish you could explain what the fuck that Trump $500 million court case is about. You seem like a non-biased source. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, the Trump $500 million case is about this. Imagine I just draw a fucking glizzy finger. <laughs> uh, how do I write this? Uh, again, I, I'd like to like read the judge's thing. Again, I read this before. But it's basically... Um, them uh, artificially lying about the value of properties they owned in ways that benefit them. <laughs> so like, for example, if, if you owned a Trump hotel in New York, you might say it's worth less than it is so you can pay less taxes, for example. Uh, you know, it might be worth fucking 500 million or whatever, and you say it's worth fucking 80 million so you pay less taxes uh this is an example but he did this in a variety of ways consistently for a very long time 
the funniest thing about this court case was the judge being like, the evidence is overwhelming that you have consistently done this for like two decades plus and aren't even the least bit sorry about it. <laughs> it's just like consistent, consistent fraud in every way possible about either overstating or understating the value of things. Um, and so, yeah, so we got hit with a fine. That's basically what it was. Uh, again, I, I could, uh, I should probably go deeper on it, but that's the idea. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, it, it, again, it's egregious. It's egregious. It's like, it's like more than 10 times. It's like extremely out of whack. The thing is, the way you can tell it's fraud, very simply, is just by looking by similar buildings around it. <laughs> so they, that's what they did in the court case. They could just be like, hey, this building right next door with the same number of floors in the same location, the same area, just sold for fucking, you know, $800 million. <laughs> Your building is not worth $20 million. That's the idea. That's, the idea is that it, it's just, it was so agreed. It's not even like close. You know what I'm saying? Again, if it's a little bit close, everyone, everyone always tries to cheat the edges a little bit. But he was like completely out to whack. Um, oh, sorry, Dazzle Puff. I'll get you off the screen. I thought it was supposed to go away automatically. How do we fix that? Um, he also lied about square footage. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes deeper than that. I was just giving you a high level. There's there's a lot of stuff that he consistently lied about when it comes to New York real estate specifically. It wasn't like a political trial. <coughs> um, it was just a very, it was like about New York real estate. Um, Mm. Have you seen After Hours by Martin Scorsese? No, I haven't. <coughs> <coughs> How'd you become financially literate? Uh, I watched this show called Marketing Monday every week, Monday, 7 p.m. And I learned a lot. I'm gonna die. <coughs> Fuck. Too much reefer, dude. What I did is I smoked a fucking the Zaza every day, and it made my mind expand. Ugh. Did you see the new Almost Friday TV video? Yeah, I did see it. Hilarious. I love those guys. Um, <clears throat> I think you need a Papa Zin to fix the cough. You think that'll work? Um... I'm from Guatemala. I'm an industrial engineer focused on marketing. An industrial engineer focused on marketing. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What? Those are such different. I'm not. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm missing something really obvious. Um. I really, really want to remote work in the U.S. Any tips? You want to remote work in the U.S. Uh, bro. I, every. <laughs> bro, there's people in the U.S. that want to do that. <laughs> it's hard, bro. The 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 number of remote opportunities is is dwindling. Um, I can't I can't give you an exact answer here. I don't know if you're really good or you know somebody. <laughs> what I would say is become a streamer. <laughs> that's my that's my advice to everybody. Is become a streamer. It always works. Um. How does remote work in the U.S. if you're not, how does the, how does the, like if it's a full-time job, how does the immigration work? How does the, how does the visa work? Does it count? How do they do that? Can you, I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually unsure how, how that shit works. If they can hire you. Um, yeah, this is exactly what they probably do. A hundred percent. 100% is this, 100%. The company just hires a, a middle management, like staffing company. That company hires you. Then you do the work through a middleman so that they can't be in trouble. That's exactly what they do, 100%. That actually makes perfect sense. Yeah, you're a, you are an employee of the staffing company. Um, <clears throat> do do. Do 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 do. Do you think the lack of a substantial recession is quietly eliminating the middle class by slowly squeezing the layman while the rich continue to profit? Anytime I hear politicians touting a soft landing, I worry about the long-term implications. I think 
this is one thing I've realized. You know, I was obviously, um, not that I think the economy's in a great spot, but I, I expected to have the headline unemployment number be higher. One thing I realized is while, this is a really smart thing I heard from a, from a smart person who also thought there would be um, a worse headline number. Uh, they said, while the government is running a trillion dollar plus deficit, there will not be a headline recession. Like the stocks <laughs> cannot go down <laughs> uh, while a trillion dollar deficit is going on. So we're in a weird spot where uh, the amounts the government is borrowing to fund everything means there's just too much cash in the system, too much is flush, which leads to inflated asset prices. Like stocks are way up, you know, housing still remains elevated. But like the underlying stuff continues to deteriorate. The average person who doesn't have access to that fucking government cash printer and doesn't already own stocks so their wealth effect is up is in trouble. That's that is more what we're seeing. A weird like a, a slow erosion of people in the bottom half, but without like any big headline crash, which ironically would probably be better for them long term. Sucks. <clears throat> It really feels like everything is being propped up into, I mean, I'm not, you know, into an election year. There's just no, you know, there's like a difficult shot that uh, we will let any any actual price discovery, which is finding the true price of things, happen in an election year. Um, da, 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 da. The government should just put trillions on Luka Doncic over points and easy. I do think Biden doing a, a $10 trillion parlay to get us out of debt would be based. <laughs> I do think if on his last day, bro just fucking yeets it on one big bet. And then if it doesn't work, loses the election, passes it to Trump, says, figure it out, bitch. We're three times as much debt. And then if it does work, he's a hero. I think that'd be kind of based. <laughs> I think that would be a heroic. Um, since you can bet on who wins the election, he could put it all on Trump and then concede. <laughs> Uh, I wonder what the odds would be like. The, the, here's the problem. The the odds are based on the the amount of money being bet on each side. So let's say there's like, you know, $2 billion, more realistically, $100 million on Trump, you know, $90 million on Biden or whatever. If someone comes in and puts $10 trillion on Trump, his payout is going to be really low. <laughs> it's going to be... You're gonna get paid point oh 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 uh PSD crash thank you for the 31 months um if there's a problem with the economy and some banks go down where does someone put their money to keep it safe just put it in a bigger bank I wouldn't worry about we've the United States government has made very clear they will backstop any bank that gets into trouble. They will just what you want to be realistically the way it's been going is you want to have your money in JP Morgan Chase because they already control like a fifth of all banking activity in America. They're too big to fail by fucking a massive degree. They're the ones that bought uh, some of the failing banks. And if there's a banking crisis, they will 100% be bailed out. If your money's in J.P. Morgan Chase, you're safe. Um, but also, if you have money under 250k, which I assume you do, because you're not fucking balling, balling, balling like that, you're fine no matter what. All banks that have FDIC insurance means that you are covered up to 250k even if the bank fails, which is like all real banks. So you're fine. <laughs> um. Do 
hey, Big A, I'm the CEO of Discover, and I'm afraid my company isn't big enough to be bailed out if our customers default. Any tips? Yeah, I have a great idea for you. Why don't you try to merge with Capital One? <laughs> Why don't you try to merge with another credit card company to bulk up as rising credit card default rates have you scared so that you can get big enough that it'll be such a problem the government has to bail you out. That's a good idea. I like where your head's at. Um, um, would breaking up a too big to fail company force the companies to take responsibility for their actions instead of throwing on bailouts? Uh, the problem with being too big to fail, the reason it's called too big to fail is because them failing and forcing everybody to like reckon with that fact. Like let's say, let's say like a fifth of Americans have their savings in JP Morgan Chase. And for whatever reason, JP Morgan Chase fails and that money is gone. The fucking chaos in the country it would cause such a disaster. That's the problem with too big to fail. They're already too big. If they fail, it causes such a, it would, it would, it would, it's civil war, dude. Do you, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's why they're too big to fail. They've, they've literally gotten too big for failure to be a, a reasonable outcome. Uh, I'm going to play Outer Wilds, bro. Guys, it's only four o'clock. Um... Mm. Too big to fail doesn't mean they can't fail. It means you can't let them fail. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they obviously could fail. It means it means if you let them fail, the 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 pain is too much. Um, it's like a person that is like, like imagine like a eighty no imagine a ninety eight year old person hooked on heroin, <laughs> deeply hooked on heroin. The withdrawals from cutting them off will kill them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it's like, bro. It's a it's a fucking ninety eight year old man who's fucking hyper addicted to heroin. Trying to cut cut them off cold turkey will kill them at this point. You, there's no. Uh, um. Why would a nine year old? I'm just saying something. Um, <clears throat> why? Um, how big does a company have to get for the government to think about bailing them out? Things go south. It's, 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 they do an equation. <laughs> the government is just thinking if this company fails, what is going to be the, the knock on effects? What's the, what is the next domino to fall? If all these people lose their savings or whatever, what does that mean? What is there panic? Is there chaos? Is there and so they they think about it like that. Uh, bro, I'm gonna wait, who's this guy? Pixel head. Where is this guy? Bro, you posted in my chat, hey big A, I'm leaving. T Pain just went live. I'm out of here. Okay. Weird, but no problem. Then you came back and said, T-Pain's boring, I'm back. So your fucking two messages have been I'm fucking annoying. <laughs> You're an asshole both ways. So I'm gonna ban you. <laughs> he deleted it? No, it was deleted by a mod. Uh, <clears throat> um... Did you see the new Veritasium video? I haven't seen it. I want to watch it with chat. All right, chat. Here's the thing. I'm going to give it a timer right now. Here's the timer. How do I do this? Outer Wilds DLC starts in. And I'm even going to cut this down to 23 minutes, okay? Okay. I want to waffle for 23 more minutes because it's fun talking about this shit. And also, Adish needs me to have some clips. <laughs> He's fucking digging deep. All right? So I'm answering questions. I'm vibing. We're having a good time. And then, and only then, am I jumping into a fucking insane gaming session. But I'm answering any questions, bro. We're just, I like this back and forth, okay? This is the most fun part of streaming for me. 
because I feel like there's a real human connection. Um, um, do you have any tips on saying positive slash optimistic during job search? My tip is that it's hard right now. So understand that it is not a personal failing on your part. It is a difficult time. You got to try. Hopefully get creative. Um, if you find one you really like, go the extra mile for it. You won't regret it, even if it doesn't work out. It'll stretch yourself. That's what I will say. I would just say it's hard. So especially if you're looking for like career job, like white collar, long-term career jobs. Those are very, those are harder to find right now. There's a lot of layoffs. It's difficult. Um, do you invest in pharma stocks? I have a position in Eli Lilly and a position in Novo Nordisk. Uh, small position of my overall portfolio. I don't recommend it. They may be overvalued. I am betting that if um, if Munjaro and fucking uh, Ozempic get accepted into Medicare or into uh, insurance coverage, that it's going to be a huge spike for the stock. That is my guess. It's a guess. I have no idea. But it's a small portion of my portfolio. I'm not fucking YOLOing calls. And if it works, it'll be nice. Uh, so far, it's done pretty well. But then again, everything is doing really well. So everything big. Um, um, if I'm in high school, should I be hoping for the economy to collapse so it uh, recovers by the time I graduate college? This is a really dark way of putting it, and I don't think you should. But I do think um, there is some aspect of like the system as it is now only benefits those who already have money, specifically a lot of money you know, something like 95% of stocks are owned by the top fucking 1%. It's like, it's, it's absurd. People have all of the stocks. So they see the stocks going up, but really all of the money is going to a few fucking massive hedge funds, a few rich people. And uh, most people are priced out of owning any assets that can grow over time. Then people can't buy a house that can grow over 30 years. They can't buy stocks that can grow over 30 years. They can't buy anything in bulk that can grow over their lifetimes. And so they're getting spooked. And I do think we have to have some sort of correction back to normal price to income ratios. A house used to cost some multiple of the local income. If everybody in a town makes on average 80K, a house wouldn't cost more than, you know, 240. Like that, it, that was normal for 30 years, 60s to the 90s, 30 years. It was normal. And now it's gotten out of whack. Now nobody can afford it. That's a problem. Like that has to eventually correct has to uh it's too socially destructive otherwise um and i think short-term pain will happen but i do i am a believer that we eventually have to have some short-term pain to get back on a real growth <clears throat> um why is bitcoin i have no idea this has happened today no i have no idea there was some shit with coinbase where people couldn't their accounts showed they had zero dollars People were freaking out, so the price tanked, and then it pumped back up. I have no idea. This is, uh, I need to learn more into it. This is crazy. Um, mm, I think this is fucked up. Uh, recently, I was rejected for an internship at a big company. I wanted some feedback why, but the person that was managing my application did not reply to my question. Do you think it's weird to write directly to link, link to people that, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't go harass the person if they didn't answer your email, but I think it's fucked up that, uh, companies can no longer give you candid feedback because they might get in trouble or sued or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can't tell you why, especially if you make it to the interview phase, um, they should you know, ideally be able to give you some feedback, but they can't do it. Uh, cause they're all scared of getting in trouble. So they'll ghost, uh, which sucks. It's, a, it's a, again, a, a breakdown of like what used to be a better system. Um, but I wouldn't harass them on LinkedIn, bro. Who's benefiting from the current housing crisis? The person benefiting from the current crisis are people that already own homes. <laughs> yeah. 
If you own a home and the price is appreciated two, 300% in value, you feel very wealthy. Um, rich people who already own property, that is who it's benefiting. Um, uh, and I mean own outright. So th there's some people who bought cheap, they didn't buy cheaply, but they bought at low interest rates in like 2020, you know, when it was 2%, and they have a low payment, but they still paid a lot for their house. They haven't paid off the loan and they can't move. They're not really benefiting. They have a better deal than you might get, but they're not really benefiting. In fact, there's a real problem right now where a lot of people are stuck. People that need to move for a job or for an opportunity <coughs> for a divorce, <coughs> they fucking can't do it. They're stuck. And that is common. And that is a, listen, I'm not weeping for them because they're homeowners. They're not with low payments. They're not the, they're not the worst affected, but it's like a big, um, less talked about problem. People are, yeah, people are stuck in these fucking, you know, a lot of the economy relies on people being able to move freely. Like, oh, I get a job opportunity in Colorado. I'm going to move to Colorado. They can't do that. And that has weird fuck up effects. Um, <clears throat> imagine divorcing, but you both have to stay in the same home. This is happening. This is happening. People are doing this <laughs> because of the way housing is. There are people that are either divorcing or want to divorce, but cannot because they cannot like this is a real thing. We have some. We have so many weird effects happening with such our weird housing market. Um, um, any tips around interview people? I've really, really been wanting to do a stream about this. Um, talk about this. This is when I first learned how to interview people when I was at Twitch. <clears throat> I got my original notes in the margins. And then things I've also used when I interview people. And then I learned a lot more when I did it at NVIDIA. I've wanted to do a stream on this. I think it's really interesting. Because I think you can also learn how to interview when you learn what the interviewer is looking for. I think it's kind of cool. But I haven't thought about how to make it funny. It's just interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to make a video for it. <clears throat> um... Uh, how do you know if a job you'll ever want to fill you or you've always hated? I think a lot of it depends on coworkers and boss. Actually, I think a lot of it depends on manager. If you have a manager for a job that you like, I think a job that can otherwise be bad or boring can feel way, way, way better. Uh, the people you're working with is going to make a huge difference. I think um, the three signs of a happy job are supposed to be like... Um, Something to do with the people you're working with. And then also um, measurability. So <clears throat> if you can tell by some number that you are doing a good job, independent of your boss's opinion, that is a that is a very uh, good mental bonus. <clears throat> well, let me give you an example. There's some jobs where you do something that is essentially kind of bullshit. Like you don't know if it adds any value to the company, if it does anything. And the only thing that matters is if your manager likes it. So you are constantly at the whim of your manager's opinion. This is, I mean, I'm putting people have jobs like this. You can tell me about it. Where it's like you are doing things that may or may not affect the actual bottom line of the company. You have no idea if what you're doing is helping anybody. And so you have to rely on being in the good graces of somebody who then like gives you a thumbs up. That can be very demoralizing, especially if you don't like them. But even if you do. What you want is some number. Like, let's say, um, I don't know, you're you're helping with sales of some product and the sales go up and you can go, look, I did this and then sales increased 10%. And so even if the boss doesn't like you or whatever, you know you did a good job. Having something you can say like, I did a good job and therefore feel confident and then like um, push for a raise or whatever is really important. And finding a, finding a way to measure what you're doing uh, I think is important. I think that's a sign of a happy job. And then um, and then also you want to feel like you uh, again, this is I want to be careful with this. Um, not that you're helping the world. <laughs> to be a happy job, I don't think it has to feel like you're helping uh, like doing goods, solving cancer or anything like that. 
that you that someone other human being is helped by your work. That could be as simple as like, let's say you're um, an accountant and you're writing a report that helps this team get their project approved or whatever, and they're 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 grateful to you. They they thank you for your work. Somebody else has to feel like, like if you feel like your job is such bullshit that no, if you didn't do it, no one else would care. <laughs> that is very demoralizing. That is very demoralizing. So you have to find some way to feel like there is a human whose job or life or project or whatever is improved by your work. That's it. That that is that'll increase your satisfaction a lot. Um. Uh, do you have any advice for someone graduating? Uh, no, I, I mean, I don't have any, again, I, I don't have any fucking golden advice here, man. I, I can tell you that it's difficult. I can tell you that each one of these situations is different than the last. And if I were to tell you based on uh, my experiences in different times, it would be not super relevant to you. I don't want to like, I think sometimes the worst thing you can do is get someone even not that much older than you, but older than you, who has a different experience, try to tell you what it's like. It's different. You have a different time. I'm just telling you it's hard right now. I can tell it, obviously. People in HR are fucked? I don't think so. No. I don't think people in HR are fucked. Um, but you have to feel like you're actually helping. Um, do you think it's worth it to start a career in an oil gas company today? If you have no moral problems with it, then yes, 100%. <laughs> I am not of the opinion that uh, oil and gas is going anywhere. Uh, I am of the opinion that even if company or countries increase their green transition, that just makes oil demand from them lower. So oil is cheaper. So the demand goes up somewhere else. I think every single drop of oil that is taken out of the ground will get used. That's my, that's my honest belief. <laughs> Uh, if it's not here, it'll be in India or China. It'll be somewhere, but they're a hundred percent. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll have, I don't think there's any like 10 years from now. It's just gone. Um, do, 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 um, was laid off in November gaming industry, bro. I'm sorry. You are, I have friends, same thing I'm hearing. It's fucking, gaming is extra hard right now. I, you know, love to you from me and hopefully this chat. Uh, you know, games industry is, is, what's funny is like, it's not even that profits are down or sales are down or anything. They just, they drastically overhired around 2021 expecting infinite pandemic growth and they didn't get it. And so the layoffs are crazy. I think um, the industry's not going anywhere. I think if you have skills that you believe in, you'll bounce back. Um, there will be opportunities. I hope you, you know, this works out for you. But yeah, man, it, it's going to be hard. Uh, I got no fucking cure for your sucks. Um, <clears throat> um, nine minutes. Okay. I had a rough time with HR in my first job because I was hired as a machine learning engineer, but I ended up doing a lot of software development that would do their work and they never gave productive feedback. I'm not 100% what you're saying. You, oh, I see what you're saying. You were a machine learning engineer who was hired to make HRs, to basically replace HR with AI. <laughs> and you're mad that they didn't like you. You're mad that they kind of try to, to to throw a wrench in the gears and slow things down because your goal was to replace their jobs. <laughs> you have to understand like they, there's, a, you know, there's a, um, if you are somebody who comes into a company and you find a way to do something better, I'm not saying this is right, people will be suspicious and distrustful and maybe outright hostile to you. <laughs> if you find a way to change the way things are done to be more efficient or better, they shouldn't be, but they will be hostile to you because what you're basically doing is upending the system they've created that keeps their job. <laughs> they are worried about a change in system that leads to them getting you fired 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Them getting themselves fired, or, or, um, or giving them more work. Uh, that's the thing. So I, you have to understand the human psychology of it. Is like, what you're doing is scary and dangerous for them. Um. Uh, I work in HR for an esports marketing agency. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. The amount of things you've seen, I'm sure. <laughs> the amount of terrible things that you have seen working in HR for an esports marketing agency. By God, I would I don't envy your nightmares, bro. Condolences. Um Feeling healthy, one way, even if it means only that I'm giving my tongue to them better, you wouldn't suck that something out like a lot of layoffs, but I have to. Uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you have to lay off people and you are doing it in the most human way you can. Which, again, you are one small cog in a larger, dangerous machine for them, and you're doing your best, and I think that's good. Um, but don't be surprised if they don't appreciate it and they're still pissed. <laughs> they don't owe you good feelings back because you are the face of a machine that is gristling them up and spinning them out. But I, I do think you're doing, I mean, I think you're doing the best you can. Um, uh, I work in retail in a small town in Sweden where most people are 70 plus. My experience is different from what everyone else is saying about retail. I feel valued. Yeah, bro, you're in fucking Sweden. <laughs> Yeah, everything's nice, okay? You don't have to worry about healthcare. You don't have to worry about fucking education or retirement. Your country has walkable cities and uh, high social trust. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. Come over here, work retail in America. <laughs> work retail in America, bro. Then get sick, see what happens. Uh... Deal with an, a more angry customer who blames you for all their problems. <laughs> Deal with wage theft. Deal with fucking hours getting cut regularly. Um, and deal with fucking bad and then see. See if you can handle it. See if you can truly understand what freedom is. Um, do, 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 do. Big A, I'm genuinely hating going through this business degree my parents want me to do. I've spent the past six years being a Taekwondo instructor, and I feel like I should go into education and be a teacher. <coughs> I don't think being a teacher is a good direction. Just in general, I think teachers seem to hate their jobs right now, and they're all quitting. I think if you make a Taekwondo dojo for rich kids, you'll be set. <laughs> Unironically, I think if you set up a fucking dojo in a nice zip code, and you teach fucking rich kids the art of Taekwondo, you'll fucking crush, dude. You'll love your job. You'll make good money. The parents will treat you right. You's good. I, I, that's my best advice I can give you. Maybe your business degree can help with that. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, <clears throat> um... What percent of wage do you think you should spend on a car? No, nah, I think you're thinking about this wrong, bro. What I see when especially Americans buy cars is they look at only what the monthly payment is. Bro, if you can, and I know this sounds fucking crazy. I know I'm being fucking privileged here, but I did this when I was broke as well. What you really want to do is try to find a cheap car that you can afford most of, if not all of it, <laughs> outright. <coughs> like you are trying to buy a used, yeah, a used car for cash is your deal. You do not want a long-term lease. You don't want to fucking, the amount of extra money you're spending on that long-term car lease is crazy. You, you're trying to get a whole thing cash uh, is the ideal. And then whatever, again, if you need a car for a job, you have to make a, you have to make a concession. <clears throat> you have to make some kind of concession, but I'm just saying like 
Uh, I know a lot of people who walk into a fucking dealership and they all they care about is what that monthly payment is. And they and the dealerships bank on that. They'll tell you what and they'll fucking add so many fucking fees onto the whole thing, but get you on a lower rate so the the payment is lower, but the overall amount is fucking crazy. You're paying way over sticker for a fucking car. Um <clears throat> it's you got to be careful, bro. That's all I'm saying. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Two minutes, okay. Um, yeah, or Klarna it. <laughs> Given that I have enough saved up, is now the worst time to quit my job that I hate. If you hate your job and it makes you unhappy and you have savings, fucking quit, bro. You'll figure it out. But the dream would be if you find a different job. You know, do a little interviewing. It's also easier to interview while you have a job. Straight up hidden fact. If you have a job, you are current. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's like a signal. It's like you're attractive. <laughs> it's like they know someone else has hired you, so you can't be that crazy. Uh, it helps. Um, Mm, yeah, it shows you're not desperate, whatever. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The biggest wage increase I ever got in my life was jumping from NVIDIA to Twitch. And in that interview, I was like, yeah, I love Twitch. I don't think I'll ever leave. <laughs> I played it so hard. Just being honest, bro. When I was in my NVIDIA interview, I was like, yeah, I love this fucking job. Even though I was, I was desperate to quit, I fucking I was actually super mad about Twitch and like hated the culture there at the end. And, but I was like, yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, I think it's kind of a dream job for me, TBH. Not sure I could ever see myself leaving, but thought I'd do this interview. Um, <clears throat> is it a good idea to put a layoff on my resume to explain the gap? You should never put a layoff on your resume. <laughs> no, no. If they ask about it, you could say that company, they did, they did layoffs. Uh, I was impacted in the... You know, but I, I, I wouldn't put that on your resume, bro. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, just put your work experience. And if they ask about the gap, say like there was, I was a layoff I was impacted in. But also for your gap, just the easiest thing to do is just have a project. Just say you worked on, especially for, especially if you're a software engineer. If you're a software engineer and you have a gap on your resume and you don't have a fucking fake project you can say you worked on. You are a bad liar and you're a bad <laughs> interviewer. You need to have some fucking project that you're like, yeah, I, I took time off to work on some some software projects. And this is one thing that I, you know, like whatever, like just just do something. You, you did some freelancing or you did just fake a project, bro. You, you should have something. Um, <clears throat> um, If you were starting out now, do you think you'd still try to get into streaming or would breaking into streaming now be too much? Bro, Queso and Pirate Software and fucking Jinxie all came out this year. They, they, and you could do it. It's not, <laughs> there's people fucking a hundred times bigger than me that started in six months ago. Um, I guess Jinxie's actually been grinding. He actually grinded for, I'm sure that, I, actually, let me, let me see something. I bet Jinxie had more hours uh, Jinxie Twitch Tracker. <laughs> Jinxie Twitch Tracker statistics. <laughs> so I have 4,000 hours total streamed in my, I don't know, four years of doing this. When Jinxie was at 4,000 hours, that was in fucking March of 22, bro. Uh... Yeah, there's, by the time he gets here, so I, I guess, you know, you got to put in some time. 8,000, yeah. Uh, um, is it ever a good idea to put experience on political organizing on your resume for non-political jobs? Yeah, sure, fine, totally. Uh, wait, is this fucking timer going to go on? Boom. 
Uh, one thing I'll say is like I think a common factor in these people, Jinxie, Pirate Software, a couple other people that put in a lot of hours and then blew up, is the, like those hours weren't for nothing. <laughs> they got better. Like watch their old shit; it's way worse. They they don't have the energy. They don't have. They haven't figured out their system. It's way worse. So if if you are unironically wanting to do this. You have to put in those hours and you have to just do it with the mindset of, I want to get better at it. You have to, you have to get, but you're going to suck at it. Even, you know, even me, even though I think I am perfect in every way and have zero flaws, I watched a little bit of that Hollow Knight boss tier list video because we did a YouTube post on it. And I was just noticing how fucking bad I was at streaming in my mind. And the way, and the th like little things I know now, I think I was so bad at it. Um, uh, I don't know, there's just things you learn from grinding. You get a lot of hours. Um, so, and I'm sure I'll think I'm still bad at it. I mean, again, I only have 4,000 hours, but I don't have enough reps. Ideally, I should have fucking 8,000 hours by now. <laughs> I should have double my time in the trenches, but I don't. So if I want to get better, I need to put more time in. Uh, all right. Um, do, 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 do. um, 30 seconds. Any more questions? What is something you could be doing better? I mean, number one is I could be fucking consistent. <laughs> I could just be really, oh, sorry, what the fuck? I could be really, really consistent and I don't do that. So I, that could be a main way to get better. Uh, <clears throat> but I have other things off stream that I am prioritizing more right now. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, at long last, the return of the Tree Lander Outer Wilds blind playthrough. No backseating, no intelligence, brain rotted, heart full, chat happy. Mm, let's get that tree emoji tree emoji spaceship emoji tree rocket boom 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 tree lander tree lander tree lander tree lander tree lander tree lander ba da ba 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 outer wilds here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm jumping in. Uh, this is a game, if you don't know, called Outer Wilds, a beautiful and unique indie game of which there is nothing quite like it. Um, a haunting exploration of space with crazy, odd puzzles. I played the first one. I really enjoyed it. And now I am back to play the DLC. Play. I do not want to use a controller. Play. Stop making me use a controller. Okay. Turn lights off. Uh, it's pretty dark. Do you know anything? No, I'm going in totally blind. I don't know jack diddly shit. Um, <clears throat> and I will be doing it without a controller. <laughs> 